Welcome to the League of Nerds comic book segment number 118. I'm John Cooney here to talk to you about comics released the 30th of April 2014, beginning as usual with my first five, meaning these are the first five books I intend to read this week, and I'll give you a little more depth on them, starting with at number one, Amazing Spider-Man number one. The greatest superhero of all time returns. The world may have changed since Spidey's been gone, but so has Peter Parker. This is a man with a second chance at life, and he's not wasting a moment of it. Same Parker luck, new Parker attitude. Putting the friendly back in the neighborhood, the hero back into superhero, and the amazing back into Spider-Man. Also returning the recharged and re-energized Electro. Series writer Dan Slott spoke about timing the relaunch with the Amazing Spider-Man 2 movie release. Quote, You're going to have a major motion picture coming out. There's going to be ads everywhere. There's going to be toys in toy stores and Spider-Man on t-shirts. There's going to be a general awareness of, Hey look, Spider-Man. So how could you not ride that wave? It would be negligent not to. This is a massive franchise that's been around for half a century, and you always want to bring in new readers and try bringing people into comics. Here's the thing. You love comics. I love comics. Our readers clearly love comics. But for the industry to thrive, we need new readers coming into the mix. A big summer blockbuster is going to be a whole new generation's introduction to this character and this world. So it's great that potentially there's going to be an all-new amazing number one there for them. Close quote. He went on to talk about Electro's inclusion in the debut. Quote, People who have never bought a comic before, they're going to know who Electro is. Why not take advantage of that? No one at Marvel has pointed a gun to my head and said, Use Electro. This is me jumping up and down going, We should use Electro. It's just the way I'm wired. You'll have to wait and see, but the one thing I can promise our diehard 616 fans, we are not turning him into an ultimate version of Electro. He's not going to magically look like he does in Amazing Spider-Man 2. This is the Electro that you've been reading about for some time, but in a new story. Close quote. And number two, we have all new X-Men number 26. The Brotherhood of the Future is back, and it doesn't mean good things for the X-Men of the past. Executive editor Mike March shared more about this issue. Quote, Issue 26 does tie into the Brotherhood story that begins in number 27. It's starting to set the stage for what the Brotherhood story will become. There are several characters in there who will be making some surprise appearances, maybe one that we know and one that we don't know. So issue 26 is really the tip of the iceberg for the next few issues. Close quote. He went on to say, quote, The Brotherhood name indicates that they're like-minded individuals getting together who are willing to almost be a family for a certain cause. So much like the X-Men come together to fight as a family for Charles Xavier's dream, the Brotherhood has a common cause, a common dream that they feel is worth banding together for. So in their eyes, what they're doing is just. They feel what they're doing is right. They think they're the good guys, but as what usually happens with the Brotherhood and the X-Men, they'll find themselves at cross-purposes. Close quote. At number three, we've got Forever Evil Aftermath Batman vs. Bane number one, one shot. The title says it all. Forever Evil is over. Now Batman has returned to take Gotham City back by force. The only thing standing in his way? Bane. Get ready for the grudge match of the year. Okay, so I'm going to break from my usual format and forego the customary creator quote here to discuss instead the elephant in the room regarding DC's solicit and publishing schedule. Mainly, where the hell is Forever Evil number seven? Perhaps they're taking the forever part of the title too literally, but come on, the book was originally scheduled for release on March 26th, and now it's slated for May 21st. Consequently, the delay trickle-down has moved Justice League number 30 and Justice League of America number 14 to May 21st, as well as Nightwing number 30 and Suicide Squad number 30 to May 28th. Meanwhile, books that have forever evil repercussions, like last week's Justice League Unlimited or this week's Forever Evil Aftermath Batman vs. Bane, are being released, and we're just supposed to either make assumptions or ignore the glaring disruption in continuity? Also, DC, if you're going to have a universal event that is meant to have impact, you must follow through on the titles of the characters affected in and by the event. For months, we've had to try to reconcile the missing heroes of the Justice Leagues in Forever Evil with their apparent status quo in their individual titles. How can we expect anything but a return to the norm if you don't give any weight to the event in the rest of the books? And if we do have a dramatic shift occur... When and how is it going to be incorporated into these other titles, especially if they either ship out of order or are delayed? Marvel had a similar challenge in its Age of Ultron event, but at least by the time it was over, we saw the fallout have a real impact on many titles. Maybe it will here, eventually, but the wait because of these delays is really dragging it out. If you expect us to take it seriously, it has to ship on time. Not only have you dropped the ball, DC, but your failure to acknowledge or admit it has left a bad taste in many mouths. 
Okay, I now return you to the regularly formatted remainder of my first five with number four, Serenity Leaves on the Wind number four of six. With help from the new resistance, Mal and Serenity's crew are crashing the Secret Alliance facility from which River was rescued. She's certain they need to go there now. Meanwhile, Zoe's in Alliance custody where she discovers that there's more immediate danger from fellow prisoners than anyone else. Fanboy Comics interviewed artist Georges Genty at Worldcon about his work on Serenity Leaves on the Wind, and he mentioned this issue specifically. Now, one of the things I got really excited with the third issue, which is the, the, the most recent issue we have out right now, is uh, the reveal that we're bringing the operative back mm. in. And I was so excited about this character. I didn't know if we were going to see him again, but he just seemed so primed from the end yeah. of Serenity to, to reappear. And right. uh, I don't know where it's going yet because we haven't seen issue uh, four through six yet, but uh, can you give us any hint as uh, what we have to expect from his presence and how he... How you, I guess how you, how you uh, whether you enjoyed or did not enjoy <laughs> uh, <laughs> crafting another character that, uh, that fans know so well. Yeah, he, uh, I will say I can't say much because he is somewhat of a catalyst in the uh, overall scheme of things, okay. but he definitely stays through issue six. Excellent, so excellent. He is there. Um, it's nice to see, obviously you see at the end of that issue that mm -hmm. there's the suggestion of a team up. I need yeah. your help. Mm -hmm. Can you please help me? And there is that element there, but of course, as we all know, not everybody on that ship is going to like the fact that this guy is sure. coming on board. I didn't even think about that. I, did, I was just going like, oh, how cool to have these Mal and, and the operative yeah. pair together. But I didn't even think there's going to be so many repercussions given the, oh, yeah. the losses that we had in Serenity. In the that very next responsible. issue, as a matter of fact. So. Excellent. Well, I'm very excited for that one. Uh, and at number five, we've got Uncanny Avengers Annual Number 1, the first appearance of the Avengers of the Supernatural. When the producers of the Mojoverse can't make a hit series, they call on Mojo to gather an all-new, all-creepy Avengers. Can the Uncanny Avengers survive the wrath of an unleashed spirit of vengeance? Series writer Rick Remender explained his plans for the annual, quote, You've got the full cast of Uncanny Avengers, and then you've got Doctor Strange, Satana, Man-Thing, Blade, Manphibian, and Ghost Rider. We're unveiling some of the Avengers of the Supernatural in a pretty fun way. Instead of the traditional, here's a situation that needs some Avengers, it's, hey, Mojo wants to make a new show and get some good ratings. It not only balances the A and the X, but we're dabbling in the Supernatural stuff as well. It's going to be a fun romp. My good friend Paul Renaud did part of the art, pencils, inks, and colors. It's a visual masterpiece and features a gorgeous cover by Art Adams. It's approximately 32 pages, and it explores the idea that the spirit of vengeance is the real threat that I think it is. It's something that might set up some cool stuff down the road, too. Without getting too much into it, I will say that this is a story that I've wanted to tell for a long time. The characters in this story, the monsters and Ghost Rider, are some of that I've always wanted to get my hands on. The new version of Ghost Rider that they're doing looks great and seems really terrific, but this is classic Johnny Blaze's spirit of vengeance and what happens when you tweak that too much and release the spirit of vengeance. The fact that it happens in Mojo World means that the story is going to be a lot of fun. It's a very visual comic book, and it's a classic Marvel annual. I wanted to do something that was the tip of the hat to the old Marvel annuals that I grew up reading. Close quote. Rounding out the top ten at number six, we've got Batman Eternal number four. Batman Battles Batgirl as Jim Gordon's troubles take a turn for the worse. At number 7, we've got Avengers number 28. A challenge 28 issues in the making as Bruce Banner puts the pieces together and confronts Iron Man. At number 8, we've got New Avengers 17. Must the New Avengers destroy a perfect world so that the Earth can live? At number 9, we have Silver Surfer number 2. Who is the Never Queen? How is the entire future of the Marvel Universe tied into her very existence? And why is she trying to destroy the Silver Surfer? Are these questions important? Sure. But you know what's just as important? Lunch, because what Earth Girl Dawn Greenwood has for lunch today could change the fate of everything. Not kidding here, this is a very important lunch. And at number 10, we've got Rye number 1. Valiant First begins in force this May with an all new vision of the future in Rye number 1, a new monthly series from comic superstars Matt Kent and Clayton Crane. The year is 4001 AD, led by the artificial intelligence called Father. The island nation of Japan has expanded out of the Pacific and into geosynchronous orbit with the ravaged Earth below. With billions to feed and protect, it has fallen to one solitary guardian to enforce the law of Father's Empire, the mysterious folk hero known as Rai. They say he can appear out of nowhere. They say he's a spirit, the ghost of Japan. But when the first murder in a thousand years threatens to topple Father's benevolent reign, Rai will be forced to confront the true face of a nation transformed and his own long-lost humanity. 
For the best of the rest from DC Comics, we've got Batgirl Annual Number 2. It's the start of a new story arc as Batgirl must unravel a mystery centered around her former Birds of Prey teammate, the woman who betrayed her trust, Poison Ivy. Next, we have Flash Annual Number 3, the start of a major new arc for the fastest man alive. In the future, the Flash is a broken man. His powers have failed him time and again at great cost to him and the city he's sworn to protect. Now he's coming back to 2014 to stop the one event that destroyed his life. Meanwhile, in the present, Barry Allen must contend with thieves trying to capitalize on the devastation of forever evil. It's a tale of two timelines that ushers in one of DC's most storied characters, featuring the new 52 debut of Wally West. And we have Vertigo Quarterly Cyan Number 1. The four colors that are the basis of comics coloring serve as the jumping off point for creators to push the boundaries of short graphic fiction in the new Vertigo Quarterly CMYK series. Starting with stunningly simple, bold covers, CMYK will defy all conventions of traditional comics anthologies. The unifying color could suggest a mood, a plot point, a coloring technique, limited only by the imagination of the fantastic creators we've lined up. And starting with Cyan, we have tales by some of the best talents in comics, a who's who of creative minds, Jock, Fabio Moon, James Tinney and the Fourth, Robert Rohde, Sean Simon, Amy Chu, Joe Keenan, Chris Peter, Tony Akins, and more will take on the challenge of telling compelling stories that scream color blue. Vertigo Quarterly CMYK will continue through 2014 with Magenta in Summer, Yellow in the Fall, and finally Black in Winter. Be prepared to see color as only Vertigo can deliver. From Marvel Comics, we've got Avengers AI number 12, the stunning conclusion of Avengers Empire. In the year 12,000 CE, how have the Avengers evolved? It's the Avengers versus Demetrius for the fate of the entire galaxy. Next, we have Avengers World number 5, three Avengers lives depend on Manifold breaching the unbreachable. What is Manifold's true destiny? We also got Hulk number 2. All New Direction, the epic banner DOA begins now. Following the shocking events of last month's Indestructible Hulk finale, Bruce Banner lies at death's door. If he survives, it won't be as the Bruce Banner we've known. How will the Hulk wreak vengeance on Banner's assailant? How can he? And we have What If Age of Ultron number 5 of 5, Avengers Infinity. What if Hank Pym never created Ultron at all? Could a world without Ultron survive a world without Ultron's own weapon-turned-Avenger, the Vision? Can the very idea of the Avengers survive without each other? In the darkest of all realities, can the Avengers ever hope to assemble? And from Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Battlestar Galactica 6, number 1 of 5. Don't miss this exciting chapter in Battlestar Galactica lore as the early origins of number 6 are explored. In developing the next generation of Cylons, Getting the models to look human was the easy part, but acting human is another story. Witness the evolution of number six as she learns to live, to love, and to hate. Out in trades this week, we've got all-new X-Men Volume 4, all-different hardcover premiere edition. The X-Men are shaken to the core by the fallout from Battle of the Atom. Kitty Pride is particularly affected, and her faith in Wolverine's Jean Grey school is eroded. With their students gone, what is Kitty to do? Meanwhile, X-23 is back, joining the all-new X-Men and kissing Cyclops? What does this mean to Jean Grey? When Jean and X-23 are forced to team up against a mysterious force, she better figure it out fast. Plus, it's the 50th anniversary of the X-Men, ringing in with some of the greatest creators to ever work on the X-Men, collecting all-new X-Men number 18 through 21, X-Men Gold number 1, and material from A plus X number 18. And we have Wolverine and the X-Men by Jason Aaron, Volume 8 trade paperback, Battle of the Atom is over, but the battle for mutant kind's future has just begun. For months, S.H.I.E.L.D. has had designs on the Jean Grey school, and now they've made their presence known. Wolverine takes on S.H.I.E.L.D.'s secret stockpile of Sentinels, but so does the renegade Cyclops, and it's a toss-up as to who Wolverine hates more. And it all leads up to the end of the school year, but is the Jean Grey school really out forever? Where do our graduates go from here, and who will have survived the experience? Jason Aaron brings the story of the Jean Grey school to a close. Plus, Infinity hits the X-Universe as the space-bound Avengers find an unlikely ally against the forces of the Builders and Kid Gladiator, collecting Wolverine in the X-Men 38-42 to and Annual Number 1. And just in time for Free Comic Book Day, Image is releasing $1 reprints of the first issues of many of their best-selling titles, including Alex Plus Ada Number 1, Black Science Number 1, Deadly Class Number 1, East of West Number 1, Lazarus Number 1, Manifest Destiny number one, Pretty Deadly number one, Rat Queens number one, Saga number one, Sex Criminals number one, Velvet number one, Walking Dead number one, and Zero number one. 
Now, speaking of Free Comic Book Day, check back with me later this week for a preview of this year's Free Comic Book Day titles. But for now, that's a few of my favorite books that are out this Wednesday, and there's still plenty of others available, so I broke out all the Marvel titles this week in their own video, as well as a separate video for all of DC, and even a video with the top independent publishers, and you can find them all on my YouTube channel at He's Got Issues.com. And we'll also have links up on the TheLeagueOfNerds.com, our Facebook page, so be sure to like us there too. And of course, you can follow everything I'm reading on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, or Twitter. You can find links to everything in the About section at He's Got Issues.com. And a reminder that both He's Got Issues and The League of Nerds are proud members of the Comics Podcast Network. So until Free Comic Book Day, I'm John Cooney, and I've got issues. <laughs>